cool. So it's about an hour since we got here. Um, it's all set up. Uh, gonna go to the pad in a second here, but we're launching the K2050 and this thing's like a ball of hornets. It's, uh, it's gonna be 44 G's off the pad. So it should be exciting. So that is 0.7 inches of nozzle throat. That is, that's serious business. So you may be asking yourself, you know, what does a sled that can pull 44 G's look like in your avionics bay? <laughs> Don't you just cheap Luan plywood? I mean, wood glue, or that might be epoxy, I don't know. Um, and then I just electrical taped the bejesus out of the battery so they didn't go anywhere. I also zip tied them, but this was like extra insurance. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. see it yeah it's right up see the cell phone tower out there yeah perfectly in line with that okay so i'll just walk up here right there all right we are heading down the runway she was fast um scary fast i think i think my gps actually locked out because it, it didn't give me an altitude or much telemetry while i was going but we got a lock on it she's uh she's in the woods but we'll get her we got our our orange on it's the season opener for firearms today so uh i don't want anyone thinking i'm a deer in the woods all right tell you what i am glad we <laughs> it drifted past this because that could have stunk let's see if we see it from the road here we're at 1700 feet away it's uh somewhere over there i think <laughs> so we find ourselves needing to go a quarter mile in that direction through this so i think i'm making the decision to get wet today all right so uh, we decided after getting about knee high in that swamp, um, let's drive around. So there's a four wheeler trail on the backside of that river. We're, we're heading up it now. Hopefully I can sneak around the backside and we'll find this thing in a tree. Uh, if not, that was a really cool experiment. So we're 167 feet. If you listen real carefully, it's beeping out its altimeter. It's somewhere, somewhere within 160, 150 feet of me. So we're gonna real time stream uh, what it's like to find a rocket in the down East Main here. Um, maybe we won't stream this whole thing. I can hear it though. Yeah. I will say I've spooked up more grouse today than I have to probably during any hunting season. <laughs> I hear it. Oh, we're close. We're so close. At least it's not in a river. The trees are getting taller. Oh no. Oh no. Well, boys. There we are. All right, so we've got our tree climbing gear. We got to get up to the top of this pine and get that chute, that rocket out. <laughs> so I feel super bad. I dropped my phone when I was like way up there. It took, I don't know, it's 1.30 now. I think I started at like 11.30. <laughs> uh, it was a quagmire. But uh, I got up there, luckily I had my knife on me. Uh, I was able to cut the Kevlar. So I need a new harness, but the tree's out. All right, take it easy guys. By the way, if you're wondering the setup, I just brought a rock climbing harness and I got to measure this rope when I get home because it's folded in half and there was maybe 10 feet left and I had to climb past my anchor. So I don't know. That was a poke. Um, I'm glad I brought the long rope. I got to pack this up and get out of the woods. I didn't have gloves, so I'm all blistered up. I don't think I'm launching a second rocket, but uh, it was still a fun day. All right, I am actually out of breath. And you know, at the truck, I was like, oh, should I bring water? And I was like, oh, I'll suck it up. I wish I brought that water. So it's a little, it's a little thick out here. 
But we'll be back to the truck in, I don't know, 15 minutes. So I always like to do like a post-mortem on the motors, and this one was fantastic. You can see uh, all my uh, grains stayed bonded just like I intended. So that's all the casting tubes just still in the liner. Um, the throat eroded about 30 thou. Um, I was expecting it actually a lot more, but I guess since this only burns for 0.7 seconds, like it doesn't have enough time to really do much damage to the phenolic. All the O-rings look like you could just use them again. So, I mean, I think this was super nominal burn. Everything cleaned up real easy. I love the stainless steel, um, forward seal disc. That thing's great. And the, uh, case is really no worse for wear. I'm probably going to wash that in the sink while everyone's napping today. Rocket did well. Um, even though I dropped this thing 60 foot out of a tree, none of the uh, fins cracked or anything. So they're through the wall, but just uh, thickened, you know, total boat epoxy with colloidal silica. No tip to tip, nothing. And I mean, that just dropped 60 foot right to the forest floor. No issues. Um, the rail buttons, I actually thought these were going to rip off. They did fantastic. Um, a little bit of scarring on them, but they're just held in with a T-nut behind the fiberglass. That's how I always do it. And uh, those things can take 44 Gs, tell you what. Um, I do have to look into my main deployment charge from my ADEP-22, which is kind of a really old altimeter, did not fire. All right, well, this is the 9-volt battery I was using with my, my ADEP here. Um, whenever I take them out, I always write the date on them so I know they're used. Well, I rolled this over, and oops, looks like I had put a used battery in there. So maybe, maybe that's why this didn't pop that main. Might have, I don't know how many flights I did on the 27th of May. Um, I think this sat on the pad in a rocket for a long time that day, too. So, um... Yeah, don't keep used batteries in your range box is the lesson learned there. But hey, that's why we run backups. Um, unfortunately, I cut all my harnesses pretty short. The, the This stuff was just tangled all up in a tree, and I was kind of dangling off of it from a climbing harness. So I just reached what I could, cut it with a knife, and let everything kind of fall. I didn't have the time to really mess with it. Shoots perfect, though.